Hello. In this video, I'll be talking about the first couple of teach modes for fiber optic amplifiers. A fiber optic amplifier, just like other photoelectric sensors, measures the amount of emitter light intensity that the receiver detects and compares that to a switch point threshold to determine whether the output should be on or off. These charts show whether the output will be on or off based on the amount of received light intensity and the operation mode. If the amplifier is in light operate mode, the output is on when the amplifier sees more light than the threshold and off when it sees less light than the threshold. If the amplifier is in dark operate mode, the output is on when the amplifier sees less light than the threshold and off when it sees more light than the threshold. So in light operate, the output is operating when it sees the light condition, and in dark operate, the output is operating when it sees the dark condition. In either case, both require a switch point threshold. There are several teach modes and set modes to teach the amplifier that threshold. The most common teach mode is the two-point static teach. It is the default teach mode on most fiber optic amplifiers and is often the most intuitive. In two-point static teach, you have to show the amplifier both the output on and off conditions. You show the amplifier the first condition, either output on or off, teach it, and then the other condition and teach it. Doesn't matter which order. The amplifier measures the light intensity at both conditions and it splits the difference, which is where it sets that threshold. Here we have a DFG amplifier configured for two-point static teach. We're using a diffuse fiber to sense the object. In this case, it's a vial. So the light condition is when the object is present and the amplifier receives more light. The dark condition is going to be when the object is absent and the amplifier receives less light. To teach, you slide the slider to the adjust mode and then present the first condition, whether that's light or dark, doesn't matter. Then you click, click it on the rocker switch. Then you present the second condition and click in on the rocker switch again. You'll see that the amplifier determines the middle point of those two conditions right here and sets the threshold there. Also, many amplifiers like this one will tell you what the contrast value is between both targets. The higher the contrast, the more reliable the sensing. Now, since this amplifier is basing its threshold on only two measurements, make sure to teach to the worst case scenario that the amplifier will see. So when teaching the light condition, when the object is present, teach the darkest light condition. And when teaching the dark condition, teach the lightest dark condition. In this application, the dark condition is when the object is not present, and so it's always going to be equally dark. So we're going to teach, the, again, teaching equally dark. So I taught the dark condition first. That's fine. And then the light condition Usually we have a cap here, but sometimes there's not a cap, and we still want to be able to detect this, even if less light comes back to the amplifier. So there's less light coming back to the amplifier here. So I'm going to teach this because it's my darkest light condition, the least reflective color. So when the amplifier does its calculation to determine that switching threshold, it's now at 1433, it won't set it at a place where it might miss a target. And then it detects all of them. You can see the output here. In all teach modes, fiber optic amplifiers usually allow you to manually adjust the threshold if it's needed. So in this amplifier, when you're in adjust mode, you can rock the switch to the left or to the right, and you can manually adjust that threshold. So if a target comes along that the amplifier isn't detecting, say it was a little farther away or a darker target or something like that, you can manually adjust that threshold to include the, that target in the correct condition. The dynamic teach is similar to the two-point static teach in that you have to present light and dark conditions to the amplifier. The difference is that it can all be done on the fly while the process is running. You start the dynamic teach, allow the amplifier to watch as several targets go by as it measures the light intensity, then you stop the dynamic teach. The amplifier processes the measurements, determines the best light and dark conditions, and then automatically sets the threshold at the optimum level. Dynamic teach can also account for things that you may not see while the process is not running, such as vibration or target movement. Now here we have a DFG amplifier configured for dynamic teach with a turntable that's continuously moving. So to teach, slide that amplifier 
to adjust mode and press the rocker switch to start the dynamic teach. You'll see that it's taking measurements, constantly taking measurements, and you send several iterations of on and off conditions through the sensing area, and then once you've had enough, you press to stop teaching. The amplifier automatically picks a threshold for the optimum level based on the conditions that you showed it. Like two-point teach, it also gives you a contrast value. In both the two-point static teach and dynamic teach modes, if the amplifier does not see enough contrast between the on and off points for reliable sensing, the teach will fail and the threshold will not be set. So if I had taught and the thing wasn't moving, it was just looking at one piece, I did a dynamic teach, the teach fails. Most amplifiers will also show you why the teach failed. In this DFG again, it shows you that contrast level, and it needs at least 100% contrast to pass a teach. Now one final thing. In these cases, the amplifier was already configured for the teach mode we used. To change the teach mode, slide the amplifier to program, and then go to teach select, press in, and you can select the teach there. Press in to accept it. 